Mae Gray in Ma Martra, ITV, was Rowan Atkinson's fourth outing as the Galax Sleuth, and if it wasn't one of the best programs of the Christmas period it was at least one of the best scheduled. This 90-minute period pot boiler was, in some ways, the perfect companion on a woozy Christmas Eve when the presents are under the tree and a mystery that's all wrapped up neatly by the end is just the thing to send you off to bed feeling narratively nourished. May Gray was presented with two murders, in Ma Martra, one victim was a showgirl, the other a morphine-addled countess. His task was to find what linked them together and ultimately who done it. The outcome wasn't predictable but the process was. After the clues presented themselves, May Gray amused, smoked, had an epiphany and eventually got his man. Although you could say writer, Guy Andrews is somewhat hamstrung by having seen Manon's hugely popular but formulaic novels as his source material. This is still, a very conventional detective series. Jeopardy comes in the form of shady men in trail piecing trench coats, filmed from behind, and is signified by swelling strings. The action follows May Gray and no one else. What makes tonight's episode so suitable, for a Christmas Eve, however, if that it all played out against an exquisitely loop Parisian backdrop which brought 1955, alive, the sort of thing that is a pleasure to have on your TV screen, even if you aren't, paying it much attention. The show has been a success in the ratings, so I must be one of the, few who still finds it hard to rid my mind of Atkinson in the Barclay card adverts or playing Johnny English, in those he was a Burke trying to be taken seriously, while here he's a genius who demands to be, taken seriously. Atkinson's face is still his greatest asset, but it's hard to disconnect the myriad contortions he used to, put it through in the name of comedy from what he does with it now, which is barely move it, at all. An additional problem was the old chestnut of how to do foreign stories in English. Incredibly, in this, fourth Atkinson May Gray there were still some characters speaking Z French and Z corny accent, while others were firmly in, the core blimey governor camp. Given that the production values on May Gray as a whole are so splendid, with so much care obviously having been taken to get the details right, this inconsistency is a curious oversight. At the very, least, you can't help but think that May Gray himself would